Hi, um, thanks to everyone uh, for clicking on and watching the video here. Uh, my name is Cahill Craig. I'm the Provincial Coach and Games Manager for Connacht GA. So this evening's presentation is on the Club Development Officer. Um, some clubs would have been part of this process last year and some, some of you will be new. So um, we'll be spending about 30 minutes or so going through the presentation. So I suppose some background to it. In 2022, we conducted a pilot um, of this program with two positions across four clubs. Um, so in Ormore, Mary and Galway, we had one position because they're a large urban uh, club, uh, which was 39 hours a week. And then we had uh, three smaller rural um, hurling clubs in East Galway, which shared a CDO between the three of them. So that pilot went uh, went off quite well. We made some changes to it, and then we launched the, the program fully last year in 2023. Um, so we had 72 clubs in total take part in the project um, with 43 positions in total. So we've just uh, conducted a full review, uh, which we'll go through uh, in more detail in a few minutes. And changes have just been agreed this week um, with the Connacht Coaching and Games Committee um, with the view to uh, it going out this evening and uh, giving the clubs an opportunity to uh, uh, express an interest in taking part. And we'll go through the timelines of that later on. So some more background in relation to, um, I suppose, uh, the structures. Um, currently, we have 28 full time staff, so they're either games development coordinators or uh, participation after officers across five counties, <coughs> which are managed by five uh, coaching and games managers. Um, they work across a large number of county based projects with a large focus on schools coaching. We also do cool camps, academy squads, uh, child initiatives, uh, youth initiatives, um, and then and the schools, as mentioned. So um, over the last good number of years been an increased demand from clubs for full time staff, um, mainly based around uh, there being one full time staff in, in other parts of the country, uh, more urban areas like Dublin. Uh, but obviously, the, we don't have the same population down in the west of Ireland in, in most instances. Um, so we feel maybe six to eight months uh, work in the club is the very maximum, but very hard to justify uh, work for 12 months a year. And I think a lot of clubs that took part in the initiative last year um, found it quite difficult to, to fill uh, some of the hours. And we, we'll go through that, some of that feedback later on. Um, we also we're not making the best use of our full time staff by having them uh, perform in schools uh, coaching uh, for large chunks of the year. And I suppose one of the, the, the big drivers of why we uh, wanted this project is that we want the clubs to be driving participation uh, rather than us, I suppose, um, putting stuff down on the clubs is that empower the clubs and let them drive participation and recruitment and, and give them help to, to do that really. So what exactly a, a CDO will do in a club? Um, a large chunk of it is uh, primary schools coaching um, where we want to recruit players to the club because all kids go to school um, and we want to get as many of them as possible into the local uh, clubs. Uh, establish and coordinate an excellent uh, club nursery program. So in some places uh, there are nurseries, very good nurseries in place. So it's a matter of uh, linking the CDO into that and helping the volunteers run that. And in many instances last year, uh, clubs would have ran them for the first time and the CDO would have uh, helped get them up and running. So it just depends where each particular club is at. Uh, coordinate an excellent club Go Games program. So uh, Go Games is, is going on in, in the vast majority of clubs and it's a matter of helping the volunteers there around organisation and implementing uh, that program. Organising and running of club camps and cool camps. So club camps might be ones uh, during the Easter and then obviously the cool camps take place in um, in July. So uh, also provide extra games opportunities for younger players uh, for initiatives such as uh, the Super Game Centres, which um, we have, we've taken part in Connacht over the last five or six years. Um, athletic development programmes for, for youth players. 
um, and then promotion of all activities through social media platforms uh, through the club PRO. Um, and I suppose just that's really trying to get the word out there in, in every locality around the province that uh, the GAA club want people involved and, and trying to get as many players as possible into the club. And then establish that uh, or strengthen that club school link um, again so that uh, we're, we're getting as many uh, kids from the local schools as possible. So uh, over the last month we've been busy uh, reviewing the clubs, the CDOs and the schools and um, they've been obviously the three main stakeholders in terms of this project, the clubs who have paid in to do this, the CDOs have been doing the project, uh, carrying out the project, and then the schools where the CDOs would have been spending a, a large portion of their of their their time. So I'm just going to flick over now to uh, some of the reviews that we that we uh, conducted. So what the clubs would have said, um, we got 60 responses from uh, from the 72 clubs that took part. Um, so overall, the, the main central reason why clubs liked the initiative was that it gave them access to consistent coaching in their in their local national schools. Um, this was mentioned by most clubs uh, that came back with the feedback. Uh, they mentioned that as it was the first time that they had uh, a consistent link into the schools and they were able to promote uh, the club within the school um, to get new players to the club. So all the counties would have been providing schools coaching up, up until uh, this point, but it would have been blocks of four, six or eight weeks in, in most instances. Um, whereas this initiative allowed them to get 19, 20 weeks of, of coaching throughout the uh, year. Other reasons um, they would have provided is that it gave support to volunteers, help uh, with the nursery in the club, and uh, they were very happy with the quality of the person and that the position was well structured and uh, well defined. So then I suppose what they, what they didn't like was uh, there was no major strong team here um, around why clubs didn't like the project. Um, many issues were, I suppose, the club issues uh, as such that maybe it might not have perfectly fitted their their setting. But um, the largest thing that actually came out of it was, was that they were very happy and couldn't fault it. Um, there was five clubs uh, that came back and said that they found <coughs> sharing a CDO difficult with, with other clubs. And another five uh, said that uh, the support and interaction between the club, county and province and, and CDO needed to be improved. So that's one of the, the changes we'll go through there in, in a couple of minutes, where we need to do an information night so that all clubs, um, all counties and provinces and the CDOs fully understand what their role is within the project. Um, there was maybe, we got through that more in, in more detail when, when I'm going through it. Um, yeah, so there was a lack of understanding of what exactly the role was in a small number of instances, and this was where where we had small uh, all uh, small issues. Um, for, there was a, a small number of clubs that wanted it later, some wanted to start an earlier. Um, OK, but again, that was down to their, their, their own um, circumstances. Um, another uh, number of clubs uh, mentioned, and this is something that came up throughout the placement, is that when when the placement started last year, there was uh, we done the training week. They went into the schools coaching for a week, and then there was a, a midterm uh, break straight away, where the clubs found it difficult to fill hours. Um, then there was the Easter break, and then there was the the time in July, which they found um, hard to fill. And then. Uh, Two or less clubs mentioned more hours in the evening, cost too high for clubs, uh, no access to second level schools, and that uh, they'd like it to run from September on. So in terms of the question, was the allocation to of the hours to your club sufficient? So for a first dab at it last year, we, we, we would be happy that we got that quite right. Uh, 39 clubs there said just about right. 
And interestingly, 10 clubs said uh, they had too many hours and and couldn't fill the hours. So that was probably one learning um, that that clubs uh, got from it there. And then there was some uh, 11 clubs who wanted more hours. Um, then clubs in terms of how how did do the field they got value for money? 44 said yes and 16 said no. Then when we asked them what projects did the CDO take part in because that's dictated by what the club wants. Uh, schools coaching came out on on top there. Then you had the, the nursery and uh, the camps as the top three and we asked them Will you take part in the project in uh, in 2024? And 57 of the the 60 or 53 of the 60 said they would, which was uh, quite quite positive for our first year. And then we asked them to rate the CDO, and uh, again the rating was was good there. And um, there was there was three that were poor that that were problematic. I suppose when you when you take on 43 people, you're you, you're not going to get 100% strike rate. So um, that wasn't bad for for a first year at it. So that was the feedback from the the clubs. I'll now move on to the the schools. So we had 130 responses from 191 schools where the CDOs were in. So the survey was completed by 96 of the principals or acting principals. So they're the people that are in control of the schools. So if there was if there was anything that wasn't uh, being done properly, they would they would be telling us. Um, overall, they're extremely uh, complimentary of the program, um, very complimentary of the of the CDOs. They love getting young, energetic coaches who are able to deliver quality sessions, uh, fun, enjoyable, and uh, at the skills level of, of the players. Um, I suppose the one thing this, the teachers really liked was the fact that it was consistent sessions over a long period of time, and it happened every week. Um, they also liked that the program was very inclusive and that all classes uh, took part and it was adapted to the ability of the of the kids. So I suppose up to this, I mentioned that we were only able to provide a smaller number of, of weeks and hours to clubs. So in many instances, there would might have been only a number of uh, classes in the school that was able to take part, whereas in a lot of instances with the CDO, um, all the classes in the school got to take part. Um, a large number of them also said that the CDOs were very well planned out, had structured sessions and age appropriate um, uh, sessions. So what they did not like about it, um, a, a high percentage of them again said that they wouldn't have anything negative to say about it, but 10 mentioned that uh, it was too short or that the bigger schools needed more time than the smaller schools as they had a larger number of pupils. And this will cut. This was done in conjunction with the schools and the clubs, so we may need to do a small bit more planning around that and get get that done early so that um, we we get appropriate hours to to all the schools. Seven teachers mentioned the punctuality of the CDOs and in some cases them not showing up. So as I mentioned earlier, there was there was probably three CDOs that were, were problematic for us. Um, so that's something that I'll talk about after a while and we're going to tighten up um, on that. And four teachers said they would like more notice in terms of when the school are taking part. The vast majority of schools are very happy um, for to have a CDO coming in, but they need to be told uh, a good while in advance in terms of months rather than uh, last year. There were some clubs going to them a week or two beforehand when they have already their timetable set out for the year. So um, the teachers gave the CDOs very good ratings. Um, so of the 130, 105 were excellent, uh, 17 good, and only three poor there, which is, uh, is is very good. And then would they allow a CDO, a CDO coach into the school next year? Every single one of them uh, said that they would. So I suppose that gives uh, a good indication of the standard that the, <coughs> the CDOs were at in terms of being able to deliver the sessions. 
So the last one then that we move on to is the CDOs themselves. So 31 of the 45 uh, responded. Um, in general, they were very positive about it. The three main areas uh, which they enjoyed was how rewarding it was uh, to develop the skills for the kids, the enjoyment and enthusiasm of the six weeks, and that it offered them uh, an opportunity to work with a broad range of age groups and in multiple areas of the club. Um, so the vast majority of these, which we'll go through after a while, are third level students, and uh, it can be hard for them to get practical work experience. Um, it offered them an opportunity to work independently most of the time with a broad range of population and in multiple aspects of the club and uh, with with players in the in the club and school setting. Um, so it was really a, a very good hands on experience for for them. What they didn't like about it, uh, 12 of the 31 said uh, that they had no reason to dislike it. Three stated that the size of uh, class and dealing with certain schools could be challenging at times. Um, and then two or, or more stated that the following things like unsociable hours, hard to maintain, uh, high energy all day, building relationships with certain clubs uh, was difficult, distance travel, club coaching, uh, needing to understand the role better and the facilities in the schools um, on, on wet days. So um, they also had a couple of suggestions on, on how it could be improved. So again, vast, a lot of them had, had no suggestions on it, but three suggested that need to be more organised around the timetable and of uh, activities and four more said they need to be introduced to the club at the start. So um, we'll go through this in the recommendations piece, but we have a, an educational evening so that uh, everyone's roles and responsibilities are um, very clear. Uh, were we also asked them, did they get sufficient support from the club? All 31 said they did. Uh, when asked from the county, 29 of the 31 said they did. Uh, one of the ones that said no, it didn't state why, and the other said they didn't uh, one of the clubs uh, didn't provide uh, enough equipment for them. And the same for the province, 29 of 31 said they were happy. One stated didn't state why, and the other said they'd like more training beforehand. So we asked the CDOs what projects they took part in. And again, it was very similar to what the clubs came back with, which we expected as uh, schools, coaching, camps and uh, nurseries. And why uh, would they recommend the placement uh, to other students and all 31 of them said that they would. So we just flip back to the uh, presentation now. So changes for 2024 from the review, which was which were ratified by the Connacht Coaching and Games Committee um, last week, was we need to have an education evening for all clubs. Um, so here, all members of the steering group uh, must attend. So the steering group for any club that weren't in it last year is the coaching officer, the chairperson, and the secretary. This would be a workshop based on explaining everyone's roles and responsibilities in the project and helping clubs to be organised in time for the project. So there, there was a small bit of confusion last year around who was to do what. Um, so the club will have to do a lot of planning and preparation in their own setting in terms of what projects they want the CDO to take part in, contacting local schools, all that type of stuff. In a small number of instances, um, the clubs thought or felt that we needed to be doing that work, whereas um, it's, it's the other way where, where clubs need to be doing that work in their own local area. Uh, second one then is we've moved from 20 weeks uh, to 26 weeks to 20 weeks. So this minimizes the holidays uh, that the CDOs have from the schools um, where the clubs weren't able to fill the hours. So it takes out, we're going to start the training week on the week of midterm in the schools, which is uh, February 12th and then it'll run up until the end of June when the when the schools start. So the only time 
uh, that will be left there where there's holidays, which will be Easter break, and that'll be that'll be easy to fill because a lot of clubs will be running Easter camps, and we'll also be doing uh, upskilling training with the CDOs at the at the camp centre. Um, so the project when it was set up uh, originally, it was set up with the CDOs on on minimum wage because most of them are in third level colleges. Um, so that has changed over the last year and we'll be moving that from 10.51 to 11.30. Uh, also, one thing that came back through the teachers was that the, the club's uh, understanding of the relationship with the national schools, and that'll be covered in the educational evening as well, where um, the national schools are under no obligation to let us into the schools, um, but in most instances are, are very happy that we go in. So. We need to make sure that obviously we're, we're, we're very polite to them and that we work alongside them and alongside their schedule because they are they're fitting us into their schedule and um, they have many other activities that they have to um, incorporate into their, their timetable. And um, also that there's clubs could get an awful lot more benefit from the athletic development space. Um, particularly early in the year in uh, February and March when the, when the project starts up. But again, that this comes back to the planning, which we'll cover on the educational evening. Um, county staff's role from our side uh, needs to be clarified for all parties in terms of following up with the uh, timetable and doing mid-year reviews, that type of stuff, which was, um, wasn't uh, at the level that, that we needed to be at. Um, improve PR um, of the project um, within each of the clubs and that clubs need to promote all codes in the club. So if a, if a club is a, a dual, if it's a football or and hurling club, both codes must be promoted within the club with a very small number of instances where one or the other was only being uh, promoted within the club and the CDO wasn't allowed to, to work with the other code. Uh, which shouldn't be allowed. We also uh, very much encourage um, the Del DFA and uh, Camogie to be part of this initiative as well. Um, the CDOs as well, we need to be stricter on. So we mentioned three of them. There was some small issues around timetable and, and when they couldn't attend a school, they didn't notify their line manager and we only found out about a weeks afterwards that they hadn't attended schools. Um, which obviously was was problematic. Um, so the specifics of it um, for this year, it's 20 year period from uh, February 12th to June 28th, 39 hours per week. Uh, they're employed by Connacht GA. They're managed by the County Games Manager in conjunction with the, the regional staff. As I mentioned, CDOs will largely be filled by third level students uh, in sport, third level sports science and coaching related courses. The rest of the places will be filled by people proposed by the clubs. So um, as we done last year, everyone will will apply and we'll interview students, which we'll talk about in, in a few minutes. And we will place students then with clubs based on their location, whether they're dual code, whether they're football, whether they're hurling, that type of thing uh, to suit the needs of the clubs. But we would encourage uh, clubs to actively look for people in their own um, area who are doing these sports science and coaching related courses or uh, a younger person in the area who might have you know, dropped out of college or are on a gap year that have, have a keen interest in coaching. We can upskill them, them type of people as well. Uh, the only clubs that will be guaranteed a place on it um, are clubs that, that uh, propose people themselves. Um, we filled most of the positions last year, but there was five clubs that we just couldn't get anybody to fill, um, which was which was regrettable. Um, so the report and structure, all employees are staff of Connacht GA and um, the county games manager will manage staff day to day with their county regional staff. Um, the club steering committee, which the coach and officer, the chairperson and the secretary is put in place to uh, help set the work program for the CDO and oversee it. The club steering group are to meet with the county regional staff three times per year. Um, so we would have been happy 
this would have happened in Jul January and uh, we done the review then at the end of July, but the midterm uh, review um, and progress update wasn't good enough from our side. So that's something that we'll be honing in that that has to happen this year. Um, work schedules are agreed by the regional staff and each participating club steering group. And uh, the next two are new again that come from the review is that there's bi-monthly meetings with the province. So in February, which will be the training week, then in April and June. Um, and we'll see how the the pro uh, the project is progressing, but they'll also have uh, monthly face to face meetings with the county staff and games managers. So this was happening in some counties last year, but we'll be streamlining it this year. Uh, in some instances, it was happening maybe on Teams. Some some instances it was happening with phone calls uh, monthly and that type of thing. But this year it'll be monthly face to face meetings with with uh, with the staff. So the costs here um, in white is what it was last year and in red is what it is this year. So obviously minimum wage um, has ch has changed. Uh, so the CDOs will be getting 141 euro per week there. Um, because the projects have gone from 26 uh, down to 20 hours, um, the, the cost has has gone down overall. So for a club, each club is paid 70%. That's the same as it was last year. The price of that now is 6,713 uh, down from 8,118 last year. Um, in the case where a club is sharing, uh, two or three clubs are sharing this uh, person, they would pay either half or a third of that of that 6,713. Each county contributes 20%, which is now 1,918 euro. Uh, Connacht uh, contributes 10%, which is 959 now. Uh, as mentioned earlier, Connacht will be the employer and carry all employer liability. Uh, Connacht GA and the counties will manage all recruitment of the CDOs. So the next three slides, I'm going to mention the responsibility of the clubs, the counties and the province. And these are three slides that uh, really need to be taken heed of um, because it's where in a small number of instances, there was a small bit of uh, uncertainty around it. And really any issues we had was, was because one of the three parties didn't fully understand the responsibilities. So the club must set up a club steering committee, which is the coach and officer, chairperson and secretary, the principal officers in the club. This uh, steering committee must attend the educational evening uh, for clubs, which will take place at the Connick Centre. The date is will be confirmed uh, soon, but it looks like it'll be towards the end of November. Um, the clubs must prepare for the CDO to be in the club for 20 weeks. So in terms of contact in schools, timetabling, if you want, you know, you're under 13, 15, 17 team on athletic development programs that needs to be planned out beforehand. In some instances where it didn't work as well last year, clubs only started planning this stuff the week or two weeks after the, the CDO had started and it's too late at that stage. That work needs to be done months in advance. Um, the club must promote all uh, codes associated, associated with the club. I've mentioned this previous. If it's a dual club, both uh, codes must be supported. Um, if if this isn't the case in a club and we find out about it, uh, the position will be terminated. Um, we can't be seen to be promoting uh, only one code within 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 a club if they're affiliated with, with two codes. Uh, have a club planning document uh, adequately filled out. So most clubs would have these filled out um, over the last three years since it was launched. If uh, if you're unsure of it, you can f you can download, you can contact one of your county coaching and game staff members, or you can download it from the Connacht GA website under the coaching tab. Uh, for paying the 70%, the first instalment must be in by October 15th and the second by April 15th. Uh, follow policy of coaching games around cool camps, uh, goal games, etc. 
Uh, clubs must provide two sets of gear to the employee, uh, which would be a tracksuit and a t-shirt, and provide equipment needed to carry out the programs based on play numbers. And uh, in, I have to say, I think all bear maybe one club last year. Uh, this was really well done, so fair play to all the clubs. And we'd like the, to promote the work of the project within the club through social media, which uh, which probably needs some improvement from, from last year. <clears throat> so then the county's responsibilities. Um, we need to have the initiative as part of the county business plan, which, which is the case. Uh, the day-to-day -day management of the employees by the county coaching and game staff uh, must ensure proper upkeep of the timetable. So this was a small bit loose last year, and it, in some instances it needs to be tidied up. Uh, monthly face-to-face -face meetings with, with all CDOs, which will be mandatory for this year. Uh, perform mid-term uh, reviews with, with all flu clubs. So this may be online or face-to-face, -face dep depending on what suits uh, with clubs and staff. Um, but this is one that we, we need to improve on, on from last year. Uh, pay 20%, as mentioned earlier and engage in the education nights for the clubs at the Connick Centre and then provide county gear if a school is made up of uh, students from a large number of clubs. So then from a provincial uh, point of view, what our responsibilities are, we are the employers, uh, we pay 10%, organised education evening for the clubs prior to uh, starting the project, which I mentioned will be likely late November. Uh, bi-monthly meetings with uh, ongoing training for the staff. Uh, we'll be recruiting the staff and provide the training week at the start and any additional uh, training requirements. Uh, that was a very good week that uh, we done last year with them and uh, from the feedback that we've seen earlier, uh, we feel it was very adequate for uh, getting the CDOs to the level that that's required. Um, we also do the administration of the of the weekly payroll for, for each of the CDOs. So here is, an, here is an example of what a CDO's work week may look like uh, in a one club model. So a one club model would be for your larger uh, urban clubs. Um, so again, there was, there was very few of them across the province. So, um, we try and have that the CDO will have two days a week off. So in this case, it's a Sunday off and a Monday off. There will be schools coaching uh, four days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then club nursery on a Wednesday and uh, Friday evening, then uh, club coaching. Some planning and administration work then because uh, there, there would be a, a, a piece of work there for the CDOs in terms of planning, timetable and sending information around in the club and so on. And then Saturday mornings is, for many clubs, can be your, your goal games time. Then for a two club model, so clubs that would get uh, 19 and a half hours each, here you basically would have two days in the national schools, an evening, and then half day Saturday. And the same, so you can just see it, it mapped out there with the with the different colours. The plan and administration would be combined because it would be a lot of the, the same work. It would be across across clubs there. Um, so as we mentioned in the review, some it was hard for some clubs to work with each other. Um, for a two or three club model to work, uh, clubs need to be a small bit flexible and willing to work with with other clubs. Um, and the earlier we can plan this out so that you know, if if one club wants to do a nursery on a Wednesday evening, uh, the other club does it on another evening and we, we come to a common agreement. The same with the goal games on a Saturday morning. Many clubs do goal games there, but it might be a case that one club just does it from nine to 11 and the others do it from half 11 to half one because any clubs that are matched up will be uh, staying beside each other. And then this will be a three club model, which is 13 hours. Um, so you'd have a day and a half in the schools each and then club nursery uh, each evening and then the Saturday. So that's just a sample that doesn't have to be the way it is, but that would be agreed with the, the clubs. But overall, it's it's 39 hours a week. 
So the benefits to the clubs is uh, increased membership, which we have seen from the feedback, increased revenue for the clubs through that membership, uh, increased revenue from extra camps like Easter camps, uh, which many clubs have used to, to pay for, for this initiative. Uh, decreased workload on volunteers, which again, that feedback came back from the clubs as well. Uh, increased participation level of children from each age cohort. So um, that would have came back as well in terms of, particularly from the teachers, is that all age groups in the schools in most instances were, were getting it, not just uh, a couple of the older groups. Um, establishing and strengthening that club school link, which is so important for recruitment of players into our clubs. Uh, increased exposure in the local area through social media postings and then uh, decrease injury through appropriate elect athletic development programs at youth level. And as we said earlier, um, we feel that a lot more clubs could get a lot more benefit, particularly from from that one. So the, the time timeline of where we're at um, at the moment, we 29th of July, the 2023 project concluded. We have uh, spent August then reviewing the project and implementing the findings, um, as I said, which were um, implemented there by the Coaching and Games Committee on Monday night. Uh, today we're recording uh, the presentation. We'll be sending it out to the clubs and on that email there's an expression of interest form which must be completed by all clubs uh, by the 15th of September, just to say whether you're, you might be interested in taking part or not. Um, I suppose that the first real deadline for it is the 15th of October then. So uh, clubs have to have their first payment, uh, which is 50% paid by the 15th of October. And the reason why we have to have that in by the 15th of October is that we're going to start uh, interviewing CDOs and we can't interview CDOs and promise them a placement and then clubs to pull out later on in the year. So really what we're trying to do here is that clubs that once they put down money, they are they are fully committed to the project. Um, as I said, then we'll start interviewing students and then the week after we'll uh, interview the coach uh, nominated uh, interviews. Um, then in 2024, the project will start on the 12th of February. Second installment of the money, um, it has to be in by April 15th, and then it ends on June 28th. So that's the project in, in total. I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes there going through some frequently asked questions um, that clubs may ask um, or may be wondering about the project. So um, one that's often asked is, will the club be part of the interview process? Uh, no, unfortunately, we, we just can't include all clubs in it. There will be a representative from the province and one from the county, uh, one from each of the counties on the interview. Just with the volume of clubs um, involved in the process, we just couldn't include all clubs. We had 72 clubs um, last year involved in it, and we, we think that it's going to be more this year. So we just couldn't have 70 different people on, on uh, an interview, which just wouldn't be practical at all. Uh, but I think the process that we went through last year will be the exact same this year. Um, we feel that the recruitment of the CDOs was very good and that has came back from the feedback and the ratings that the teachers and the, the clubs gave the CDOs. Uh, will the CDOs be allowed to coach in the second level schools? No, again, this project isn't included. Um, the only projects that are included are the ones that were listed earlier on. Just in the secondary schools, uh, with the size of some of them, it just it, it'll eat up all the hours. And also there's, there's multiple, in most instances, there's multiple clubs feeding into second level schools. So very hard to coordinate that. Um, who organised the schedule? So the club must decide what projects uh, from the list provided earlier that they want the CDO to take part in. And uh, the earlier this is planned out, the, the better, as I mentioned, for the clubs. Then the county coaching and game staff will meet with the, the club or the two or three clubs inv involved and agree the timetable. Um, as I mentioned, the better prepared clubs are for this, uh, the more value clubs will, will get out of it. And the clubs that didn't plan 
their clubs that wouldn't have got the full value from from the money that they invested. Uh, will it be available for Christmas? Uh, no, um, and and the main reason for this is that 95% of the sports science and coaching related courses, all their placements are from January to summer. So that's why we've lined it up at that. We've also lined it up at that time of year as well is because clubs start in February, March or, or April, and that's when we want to be getting into the schools so that we can ultimately get the players into the clubs. What will the CDOs do on the summer holidays? So as we mentioned earlier, the project has been cut back to 20 weeks um, to, because this, this issue came up in the feedback where there was too much time off in terms of midterm and July. So you're only left with the Easter break now and there'll be, there'll be plenty to do in that period because a lot of clubs run Easter camps, as I mentioned earlier, and the, the training of staff as well. Um, some more questions then. Can the CDO coach the coaches in the club? So no, again, um, they're, as I mentioned, that they're, they're third level students, so they're not qualified enough to be coaching the coaches. Um, this is the role of our, our qualified uh, Sport Ireland uh, coach developers, or they were called tutors in the past. Um, there are several of these in each county. And one of the main ideas behind uh, this project was that the CDO would take on the school's coaching, so could free up our full-time staff who are all uh, coach developers to do more coach development work in the clubs. So if if you want coach to coach work, um, you can contact your your county games manager, and um, they will they will organise that for you. Uh, will there be a stipulation in the contract that they have to complete the full 20 weeks? Um, yes, there'll be a stipulation in their contract that they, they have to do the full the full 20 weeks. Um, it'll be the same as any other job in, in any other industry. Um, what action can be taken if uh, the club is not satisfied with the CDO? Uh, once the county or province are formally notified, we can sit down and do the review with the club and CDO at that point. Um, but it needs to be done at the time and not after the project. So some of the issues that we, we mentioned, there was a small number that we had slight issues with. We didn't hear about it till nearly the project was over um, or it was actually over. So it's very important that the, the clubs get onto us straight away and, and tell us and we can, we can take action then. Uh, what will the role of the CDO be with the youth teams? So it's, we don't want CDOs in being part of under 13, 15, 17 management teams, because that's what the volunteer coaches are there to do. Um, the CDO is there to, to work on the nursery, the goal games, the schools coaching, the athletic development work, um, and, and assist the volunteer coaches in, in them capacities. Um, if the club wants to set up an athletic development program, are the CDOs qualified to do this? So depending on the course that the CDO has come from, uh, they may or may not be qualified to develop an athletic development program. But the way we work it is that Daniel Ford is our uh, Connacht GAS and C officer. He will develop the programs uh, for the CDOs and the CDOs will oversee this program in the club. So they're able to implement the program. Um, They'll have that done in their course, but we'll also do it as part of our training week. Uh, they'll have done our Connacht uh, GA SNC level one course where they can oversee all the exercises and uh, programs that Daniel will be outlining for them. So that has uh, brought us to the end of the presentation. I hope it has been informative for you. Um, if you're interested in taking part in the project now, what you need to do is get the expression of interest uh, form filled by the 15th of September and we'll be back in contact with you then at, at that time. Thanks very much.